Thank you, Tom. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Gene Reagan, and I'm a principal engineer here at DreamWorks Animation. I'm sure that most of you saw the keynote presentation by Ken Legault, our director of research and development. He gave a general overview of how we make movies and spoke briefly on the tools that we make. These tools are used by artists, engineers, and executives, and are vital to our movie making process. I'll be talking about how we integrated Qt into our existing tools, and how Qt is acting as a foundation for our next generation technologies. We currently develop eight very large applications, and a couple of thousands of smaller command line and user interface applications. The majority of these applications were written using a proprietary toolkit that has been in use at DreamWorks Animation for over 16 years. So, before I go on to this next slide, I want to point out something. I'm going to be showing you some screenshots of our major proprietary tools. And when I started working at DreamWorks about four years ago, the first thing I wanted to see were examples of tools in other studios. And you almost never see them. So, I'll show you some of these. They might not be terribly exciting to you, but I would love to see something like this if I worked at another studio. Um, so here's an example, or here is a screenshot of our current lighting tool. So let me use this modern pointing device here and point out some things. Over here is, actually, let's start on this side. This is our 3D viewer. It's where a lighter can position um, lights, objects, um, set distances, focal lengths, um, all sorts of properties. Down here is something we call the spreadsheet. And this actually gives us a way to, to view all of the objects in the scene, set properties, um, arrange them according to, to various groups. Oops, the clicker, okay. And uh, right here is just the, the final rendered uh, image of this little scene right here. Not terribly uh, complex, but you can see how, it, how an artist can view the final render. Um, here's an example of our rigging tool. Um, over here you can see the the actual rig, you saw something like this in the keynote today. Here's just a finger and the various manipulators. Um, over here is the actual graph that shows the, the various um, flow of the controllers. Once again, here's our sort of omnipresent, ubiquitous spreadsheet that shows up in all of our applications. This is our character animation tool. Um, uh, once again, you have a 3D viewer, another view of the camera, and here is, this is actually, the, some, it's the same spreadsheet, but it's actually able to view the data um, as a set of curves. And these curves control the way that the characters are moving. And finally, we have, uh, we have more tools than this, but another one of our major tools is our 3D paint application. Um, so this looks more like a tool that you might be used to seeing out there where you have a 3D viewer, um, various brushes and tools that you can apply a surface to uh, a set of geometry. So, to understand why we developed our own toolkit, you have to take a look at the computing environment at the time that these tools were created. Our code has a history stretching back to 1980, and many of our tools currently in use were created in the early to mid-90s. Our original software ran on many computers like the PDP-11 and the VAX. Our software then made the transition to powerful graphics workstations, such as those made by Silicon Graphics. Uh, in fact, you can still people today talk fondly about the SGI and the IRIX operating system. We now primarily use desktop Linux workstations, and all of our proprietary, proprietary tools run under Linux. In 2000, the studio began, began a major effort to move away from graphics workstations and onto Linux running on desktop personal computers. The decreasing price of PCs, coupled with the rapid increase of computing power, made this move very compelling. As most of our software was based on IRIX, a port to Linux was much easier than porting over to any of the other alternative operating systems. The Linux kernel and supporting libraries were also becoming much more stable, mature, and feature-rich. All of our software now runs under Red Hat Enterprise Linux on HP workstations. Linux has now become a standard in the computer graphics and visual effects industry. Almost every major studio has a large installed Linux base with software and services that take advantage of Linux. 
Our studio actually did so much work helping make Linux become a standard that our CTO, Ed Leonard, received an Annie Award in 2008. An Annie Award is the highest honor the animation industry recognizes, um, so it was a big deal for us, probably for Ed too. Getting back to our software, in the early 90s, the workstation of choice for computer graphics was SGI, and the operating system was IRIX. If you wanted to create an application, you could use Motif or create your own framework directly on top of the Xlib API. Because of the unique needs of our tools, the choice was made to create our own toolkit on top of Xlib. We called this toolkit the Facade User Interface Library, or FUI for short. FUI was based directly on the Xlib API and did not use Motif or any other available library. It was created specifically for the needs and demands of the computer graphics industry. It provided a window-based interface that supported callbacks, timers, event filters, and messages. The library also provided many utilities for application development. This toolkit provided us great advantage in developing our proprietary applications. The applications being developed were small and nimble, and the time frames for the work being done were quite short, around a couple of months. The users fre frequently were the programmers themselves, and almost all users were very technical and willing to put up with unique interfaces and limited feature sets. And I actually found a screenshot from uh, one of our programs from 94, so you can see the IRIX desktop, um, you know, the little IRIX tool chest up there, and FUI as it looked at the time of uh, th that this application was, was created in 94. Very simple. The controls look like Motif, but it was all raw Xlib, just sort of emulating the Motif interface. As the company grew, the duration of show development increased, the number of artists increased, the number of programmers increased, and the total numbers of shows being developed simultaneously increased. Our previously small and nimble toolkit began to demand a larger development effort. The move off of the SGI platform and increased desire for application features and competition from outside toolkits exposed many issues with FUI. We had to manage hardware and other low-level services directly. It also became increasingly complex to develop new widgets. Also, various development teams began to create their own object-oriented wrappers around the FUI code, creating a greater maintenance burden and increased code complexity. Development was in a constant race with external toolkits to keep current and implement state-of-the-art widgets and technologies. And a lot of, low, of code had low-level expectations of what hardware was present and would frequently make assumptions that certain hardware was present. Introducing a new window manager or graphics card could lead to subtle and difficult to diagnose problems. Our primary focus should be the creation of feature-length animated films, not the development of proprietary and industrial strength application frameworks. We realized that maintaining our own toolkit was an increasing burden. Our next step was to identify the various framework possibilities. We had to make sure that whatever choice we made would be ideal for both new application development and also have the ability to integrate with our current proprietary framework. We could continue to develop and improve FUI, but this type of effort was not really the focus of, of what we do. So we took a, look, a good look at GTK, WX Windows, and Qt. We wanted an extensive feature set, a mature and well-tested code base, and the avail avail availability of support. Qt ended up being the obvious choice based on our requirements. So why Qt? In addition to pur purely technical reasons, Qt has become increasingly more common in the computer graphics and effects industry. The latest version of Maya from Autodesk, which we'll be hearing about shortly, is using Qt, and we're able to enhance and extend application functionality using the Qt API. Nuke, a high-end compositing application from the Foundry, has also chosen to use Qt. And Qt is also in use in most of the major animation and effects studios. This provides a common framework and set of skills that can be shared across company boundaries. If you work at another studio and use Qt, you can give your resume to me later on. So once choosing Qt, we had to lay the groundwork for integrating it within the studio. Using Qt to create brand new applications is the easy part. Our challenge was figuring out how to use Qt from within existing FUI-based applications. This entailed refactoring and cleanup work in the current studio code base. 
We had to create a basic event model. We had to clean up the event loops used by the timers and callback code. We also had to bottleneck all framework and application calls to the Xlib API. So, since this is a technical presentation, I may as well present some, some code. Um, so I'll try to walk you through this. It's not really complex. Um, this is just some typical FUI code. Um, it's actually a slider or a scroll bar. Um, and here you can see calls to Xlib API. We have pointers to the current display, to a Xlib pip map, pix map. We have a bunch of GCs cached. Um, there's also some hard-coded um, values. And just to make things fun, how about just some numeric values introduced on the fly? Uh, so this is this is very typical of of the code, not only in FUI but across all of all of the bits and pieces of our our source code. So before we could even think about um, getting this code working with Qt, we had to address this. So here's it here's it afterwards. It's a little bit cleaner. So same code up here, um, but we have we've abstracted away the the raw Xlib API, API calls to our own bottleneck routines. Um, we also got rid of like raw exposure to things and created some abstract, um, more opaque types. Uh, we also introduced a theming mechanism. I'll talk about that in a, in a little while in a couple slides. Um, but here we've gotten rid of the hard, hard-coded colors. We got rid of the uh, compile time defines, and we also introduced um, some other niceties to make this code a little easier to work with. Actually, regardless of whether we're moving to a toolkit or not, this was really nice to do, but it had to be done. So, with the preparatory refactoring of FUI complete, the Qt integration phase began. We had to create a hybrid event loop, and we evaluated a couple of different approaches. We ended up coming back to the decision to have FUI examine all events first, and then pass the event back to Qt for handling. An initial plan to replace FUI timers with Qt timers was abandoned after realizing that the FUI timer code was very delicate and, and slight changes to timer execution order would have major impact on our applications. We also considered trying to swap out FUI widgets directly for Qt widgets, but decided this would be too disruptive to the code. We did end up creating a standard style that both FUI and Qt used to draw a unified theme, and you saw that in a couple slides back. Um, this actually allows FUI applications that use Qt widgets to take on, for the Qt widgets to take on the appearance of the native FUI theme, or vice versa. If you had a Qt application that was using a FUI widget, it could then take on the FUI theme. And depending on how the tool is deployed, we'll choose one theme over the other. Um, also, finally, all Qt integration is opt-in. This allows legacy applications to isolate themselves from Qt until they decide that they want the Qt uh, functionality. However, developers are finding it very hard to res resist the allure of Qt. I actually don't know if anyone actually opts out these days. They love the new widgets. So all of our legacy applications are now using the hybrid FUI Qt event loop. Many of our applications have created complex widgets using only Qt code that interact and cooperate with FUI code within the same application. We chose not to replace and port all FUI code over to Qt code. Our hybrid approach allows us to only have to port code when we deem it appropriate and necessary to do so. So let's take, it, let's take a look at the approach we use to create our hybrid event loop. Um, I'll just try to walk through this. So the code snippet shows a subclass of our QAbstract Q event dispatcher. So it's right here. We create an instance of this event dis dispatcher early during library initialization, before Q application, before FUI application, before anything. It's pretty much the first thing we do. Later on, when we create an instance of a Q application, the Q application code will, will use this pre-existing event dispatcher by default. That's sort of the magic inside of um, Q core application or the Q abstract event dispatcher. And by using an event dispatcher, we have more control of the event flow and are able to examine and dis dispatch events coming into either Qt or FUI. Um, so if you look at this example, actually, there's, there's nothing magic here. Um, if you were to look at the .h file of Q abstract event dispatcher, I think you just see that these are all, all virtual methods that, that we've overridden. So 
So this is this is actually the process events call inside of the our, our event dispatcher subclass. When you look at this, it looks remarkably simple, and it sort of is. Um, so right here, we make sure we have actually an instance of the FUI application. If we don't, it's really bad, because um, there's really no way that this, this whole mechanism should be running on its own outside of the FUI environment, FUI QT hybrid environment. We also do our runtime check on this. Instead of doing it at compile time, we do it on runtime. Um, this allows people to engage or disengage the, the QT event loop, primarily for performance and debugging reasons. The problems are usually ours and not Qt's. Um, in fact, it's never Qt's fault. So if they have to turn this off, we need to look at our integration. Um, I, like I said, I don't think anyone has Qt disabled now. So we give Qt a chance to handle the event. We, FUI does its thing, and then we give them another chance. So actually, a lot of the, uh, the magic, I guess, is inside of this FUI poll which I would love to talk about this, but there's not enough time. But if anyone wants to ask more, if you have a similar challenge to this, please ask me more after the session um, so I can tell you some of the things that, that we encountered during our integration. So the studio is now able to focus on a wide range of next generation technologies. These technologies will serve as the foundation for the studio's development efforts for years to come. Qt is playing a major role in our next generation efforts. We are in the process of creating new lighting and animation tools, and these tools will be based on all new technology. A new application framework is being created that serves as a common platform for our development efforts. This framework, which relies heavily on Qt, provides a common set of studio widgets, a distributed notification mechanism, command dispatching and logging, playback, and much, much more. It allows our applications, it also allows our applications to be easily extended using technologies like PyQt and Qt Declarative. I guess it has a new name today. I didn't update my slide, slide but you can use QML. Um, also takes advantage of, of multiple threads and multiple cores and handles the 3D display of lighting geometry and effects. Um, so, let's get right to some, some good stuff. Um, so this is some screenshots of next generation light. So I need, to, I need to point out, this isn't our final look and feel, and you guys are getting like, in fact, this is the first time we've ever showed it to anybody outside of the company, so it's pretty cool. But what you can see is some of the, some of the things that were in our legacy tools, we kept, but we made better. So for example, we still have our spreadsheet, um, and we still have a 3D viewer. The big difference now is that we can support pretty much, well, n number of 3D viewers and multiple spreadsheets. Um, you know, we have a more modern um, uh, docked UI, you know, similar to, you know, utilizing QDoc widgets and QMain window. Um, some other interesting things to point out here is we actually made extremely heavy use of the graphics view framework. So this looks like widgets, but it's really Q graphics view. And we went that route because a typical spreadsheet displaying all objects in a next generation scene could have tens, if not hundreds of thousands of objects. And each one of these objects could have 30 to 200 attributes. So we never really want our artists to deal with this level of complexity. Um, but sometimes you really have to go and, and, and display everything and do some advanced filtering to try to get to uh, exactly what you're looking for. And Graphics View can handle it. It's really cool. Uh, we also implemented a, a graph or node viewer um, using OpenGL. So this is similar to what you saw in the old generation tool, but it's much more advanced and dynamic. Um, I can't show you an animation, but these things all animate. And uh, as you drag things around, they relay out. It's, it's super cool. More cute magic there. Um, we have a new display pipeline that can display you know, it's a little bit washed out, but this down here is like an extremely large particle field. As a matter of fact, um, if you saw in Ken's uh, presentation, there was a scene where boats were on fire. This is the particle, um, the particle simulation used in that. And each one of these particles, and there's a few hundred thousand of them, can actually be individually selected and attributes set on that particular particle or, or vertex. It's, it's really cool. You could never dream of doing this with our current tools. Um, 
The, the 3D viewer also supports the creation of regions. A little bit hard to see, but the artist is able to specify regions directly in the 3D viewer um, in 3D space and set up um, various areas of, of selection that they can later perform various lighting operations on. Uh, our movies become more and more complex. As you saw in Ken's slide, over the last 10 years, complexity and rendering times have increased massively. Part of that is that we're in a constant race to make our films look better and better and better, more realistic, more stylized, with more smoke and particles and geometry and explosions and, and everything, and that just means more and more stuff. So we provided advanced uh, dynamic querying and, and searching tools um, that can categorize these things into various groups, deal with massive bunches of assets, and we pretty much heavily abuse the various Q model classes, and they love it, so we love to put data into those guys. Um, our display pipeline can visualize lots of geometric data. Here we have a whole bunch of instances of various types of trees that have been dynamically created. And uh, finally, I'll try to describe this a little bit, but I talked about sort of the Q main window, Q doc widget. Um, we've extended that so the artist can actually create multiple dynamic workspaces based upon the current task that they're doing. Uh, so in this case, they have a couple of display windows where they've positioned cameras differently. Um, they have a group of assets set up that they're operating on. And this, this little thing here just represents how you could dynamically grab a panel or, or a Q doc widget, if you will, place it inside of the layout and have the layout reflow. And in that case, the artist might decide to save that layout as a new type of, of workspace, for example, for finaling or, or um, surfacing. So, in conclusion, without Qt, we would have to focus on the development efforts of toolkits, when what we really want to do is develop software that enables artists to realize their artistic vision. When the artists are able to focus on their art, we all get to enjoy the great movies that they create. And making great movies, not application frameworks, is our real goal at DreamWorks. I would like to thank you all for taking the time to hear our story about how Qt is helping DreamWorks address our technological challenges. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them now, and I'll also be here at the conference all week, so if you see me, just grab me, and I'd love to talk more about Qt, DreamWorks, uh, legacy event loop timers, Xlib. Please ask. So thank you very much, and I'll take any questions. Yeah, um, microphone, microphone. Oh, here's the microphone. I don't know how to operate that. Um, so my question is: uh, multiple monitors, um, 3D glasses. You know yes. how? Sure. So w what they're doing on this? Area. Sure. So definitely, definitely multiple monitors. It's a little bit to show on a PowerPoint presentation, but. Typically, let's just talk about lighters. Um, do I have enough time? Um, okay, okay. So let's talk about a typical lighting setup. Um, a lighter will have, right now, it, a lighter will have two, I believe, 24 or 27 inch um, wide aspect ratio LCD panels. Um, one of them will be color corrected, um, which is where they'll want to display all of their, their final rendering and so that everything's pure and it's, it's what they realize. The other one is just a more general purpose monitor, although more and more they actually have two color correct monitors as the, the price point decreases. Um, I bet if they could have four monitors, they could do it. Um, our workbench stuff could actually handle that, like we remember layouts across screen. You can undock the panels, you can float them, and it, everything restores, and that's, that's a combination of Q main window, Q dock widget, Q settings, the whole, the whole stack. Um, yes, for 3D displays. So we have 3D displays. So if a lighter sets up a scene, or, or actually anyone in, the, in pretty much all of our tool chain, they're able to view that on a dedicated 3D monitor. Or if they're on their workstation, we have a particular mode that allows you to use anoglyph glasses. Those are the old school red, although there's some variations that are like yellow and greenish. but. So if it, if it comes to that, they can do that, or they can just send the scene to like you know some gigantic Samsung 3D monitor. Is, is that it? Anything else about displays? Okay. 
Any uh, other questions? Uh, I already uh, grabbed the mic. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the great presentation. Thank you. So I, I was wondering, I mean, because that's like one of those really heavy desktop apps that, that you guys have, have developed. So how, how, how does that whole QML thing benefit you? I mean, it's like something that, that you know, it's not obvious. How, I mean, Q widgets on the one end and Q QML, sure. how, how does that fit into your, your development? Sure. Um, well, the developers themselves, like in, in Ken's slide, he sort of pointed out there's two main areas of development that goes on. There's like sort of like core R&D, and you can sort of think of those guys as like they build the libraries, they build the apps, they really live in a world of C++. Um, and then there's the people in production engineering, and they focus on pipeline, and part of the pipeline is making the tools do cool stuff. And in the, in the old days, um, the way that they would extend the tools was through a proprietary language that we imaginatively called script. Um, it was sort of like maybe Java. It had a bytecode interpreter. It was extremely difficult to maintain, and it also had to know a lot about the hardware. So what we're doing right now is PyCute is an option that artists and technical production engineering people can use to extend the UI because we have a whole command a notification system that's introspectable. So you could easily say, it's based on these types of commands or based on these types of notifications, I want to create a widget, and that widget is going to say, let's say I load an asset, and I'm going to get, I'm going to be able to display that asset and some attributes about it. You could all do that. You could do that through Py, PyQt. You could also do that through QML. I'll, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about some technical challenges that we have. Python has a very interesting threading model. Um, and it, it, I, I suppose in a dream, dream world, what we'd like to say is, I'd like to have all the benefits of Python, but I'd also like to control the threading model and also have my own memory allocator and, and do these things. And these are actually things you could do using QML because you could instantiate your own JavaScript interpreter, you could install your own allocator, you could do all that. So I'm hoping that QML will have a much larger impact on how our production engineers and, and gifted artists extend the interfaces. It's mostly done using PyQt right now. Um, maybe in five years, uh, C++ developers will write all of the, the user-facing UI in QML and never create another new key widget again. I, I'm not sure, but it's a possibility. Yes. Um, you started with Irix and then moved over to Linux because there also you have the X server and can, you, uh, can run your Fury toolkit or whatever it's called. Yes. And now um, when you ported everything to Qt, is it interesting for you to move your applications also to Windows or to the Macintosh? Um, well, let's see. I'm not a politician, but we, <laughs> we, have a, we have a very strong relationship with HP and a very strong relationship with Red Hat. So Linux is the official operating system um, for our studio and the studio the studios in general spent a lot of time sort of unifying Linux across you know th there was a consortium of visual effects houses and feature animation houses that being said we can't predict the future and by having our code based on something like Qt it gives us the flexibility to move to to any conceivable platform, and certainly as proof of concepts, um, code has been compiled on other platforms. But right now, we're we're all Linux. But it's it's cool to not be chained to raw xlib calls or xpix maps or, or whatever. So I saw someone over. Oh, way back there. Sorry. Maybe you'll be next. <laughs> when you're creating new applications from scratch, uh, will you keep using this hybrid approach which you just described, or would you go to pure Qt code? The, new, the two new applications are next generation animation and next generation lighting tool, and the the entire application framework stack is is pure Qt. Pure Qt. If there's a widget that's been identified in the old generation software what we actually have done is we've taken that and used it as a guide for the new widget. So we're not, we're, not, we're not trying to pull old stuff into the new world. However, when you look at the timeline of how our films are developed, a film might be in production for five years and the tool chains have a very long lifespan. And what happens is that someone using the current animation tool really, really wants the new stuff really bad and they can now pull that in. It's, it's usually 
what hasn't happened yet, because as part of our analysis, when I was like laying the groundwork for getting cute into the studio and creating the new application framework, we looked at the old spreadsheet, we looked at the old curve editor, we looked at all of the special magical widgets that we have, and we actually created new versions of those using Qt. Um, because the things that the Qt, that Qt provides and the performance we get, especially with like graphics view with the spreadsheet, we can do visualizations of data that's totally impossible using the current spreadsheet. So it's conceivable. I, 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 guess, I guess we could pull the old widget in, but it's almost like that's the bridge we don't want to cross. It's, it's... Okay. Yes. Um, when I was looking at, at, at your new, is it actually working? I hear you, yes. Okay. If when I was looking at your new window, I was, was wondering, are all these various windows inside the window queue graphics items on a big queue graphics canvas, or are these queue doc widgets that contain a queue graphics uh, view? Sure. They're, they're queue doc widgets that contain graphics views. So. We, we've sub we've subclassed Q main window and Q doc widget, and we've made it do a bunch of new and interesting stuff. But ultimately, yeah, you have a big a big Q window or a Q main window, and then a Q doc widget. And each one of those guys may hold a panel that is a OpenGL widget. It may be a Q graphics view. It may be a vanilla plane Q button or something. So, yeah, each each little individual guy could potentially be a Q graphics view. It's not a huge composited thing. Although, now that you mentioned that, it would be really cool because some of the graphics effects we want to do, we'd love to have um, that, that level of flexibility to do compositing and transitions and blends and... I was asking because I'm sort of having lots of trouble with QDoc widget as it comes with Qt. It's, it's uh, hard to manage. It tends to change sizes if you do stuff to it. And this looked really stable. And I was actually considering doing uh, all my widgets and one big Q graphics view, but then I need an OpenGL widget as well. Yeah, um, well, like, yeah, so we did, so Q, Q, doc, Q main window is like really based on the concept of you have a central document and then you have these various guys on some region to the side of that. That was like our first roadblock, so that's why we had to inherit from it and redo the layout, and it, it was pretty, it, it was a pretty major engineering effort, um, but we were making Q main window do things that it wasn't intended to do. It was, it was meant to be a multiple document interface with little panels on the side. So I understand, I understand the problems you're having. We had them too. Not you're not considering uh, giving that bit of code to uh, Nokia to push into Qt 4.8? That would be cool. Uh, why not? Yeah, so. <laughs> well, think about it. Yeah. Great. Good.